In this video I will show you how to run an Intel Coffee Lake based CPU, so for example the 8700K, 8600K or any other CPU model from the new 8th generation Coffee Lake CPU lineup on an old Z170 or Z270 based motherboard. Since Coffee Lake's launch there have been numerous discussions about why Intel doesn't allow their new CPUs to be run on the more old chipset based motherboards. And the short answer to that is, is that the new CPUs just draw more power. But actually the old, more higher class motherboards can run these new CPUs just fine, even the 8700K. So far running this Z170M OC formula from ASRock doesn't oppose any downside compared to a new and expensive Z370 based motherboard. I can reach high memory speeds and a high CPU overclock with this motherboard and all the uh, PCI Express slots and SATA ports function as they should and the uh, PCI Express link speeds are what they should be. Even the VRM temperatures aren't causing any problems at all and I can run this motherboard even without the heatsink on at all. If you decide to try this guide, please remember that you are doing it with your own risk and the uh, method of running these CPUs is not 100% the same on each motherboard model. To run a Coffee Lake CPU on an old motherboard you pretty much only need a modified BIOS that has the uh, Coffee Lake CPU microcodes modified into the BIOS. Then secondly you need to make a physical modification on the uh, bottom side of the CPU, so on the golden contact pads to allow the uh, system to start when you have a Coffee Lake CPU plugged in. In addition to these some motherboards may need a physical jumper wire on the motherboard if the uh, resistance thresholds don't allow the uh, system to start with the uh, CPU modification only. It's this uh, yellow wire here. This uh, small little pad here is connected to a ground point on the motherboard with a small wire. But most of the time this should not be needed and you should experiment with the CPU modification only first. So the first thing we've got to do is to upgrade the motherboard BIOS to support these new Coffee Lake CPUs as I mentioned earlier. You need to flush the BIOS using an old Skylake or Gaby Lake based CPU. If your motherboard supports two BIOS chips, I would highly recommend you flush the uh, Coffee Lake BIOS to the other one while keeping an old one on the other, just in case you need to revert back. You just go to the BIOS flash utility inside the BIOS with the uh, BIOS ROM file saved on a USB stick and start the process. Let the BIOS flash procedure complete and when it completes do not let the system to restart by itself and just shut down the power supply when you get the notification that the BIOS update process is complete. So the second part of the modification is that there are two particular golden contact pads on the bottom side of the CPU that need to be short together. I have got this to work with both soft pencil like HP or softer, something like uh, 2B has reportedly worked really well, but for long term I would recommend something like conductive silver paint. I would like to stress out from the beginning that you should not use physical solder to connect the pads together because the uh, CPU bottom side easily becomes uneven that way and when you lock the CPU down into the socket with the clamping mechanism you can easily damage something. So if you decide to use pencil or silver paint to do the mod I would first suggest you use electrical tape or something similar to cover all the uh, surrounding area so that only the two particular pads can be seen. Then you would just Rub the pads with pencil if you decide to use it, or if you decide to use paint, you would just put a big plop of it, ample amount, so that all the area here is covered. Let it dry overnight, like 12 hours, and when you come back the next day, you would just rip off all the tape and clean all the excessive paint from around these pads with uh, like a cotton pad and uh, some cleaning alcohol. It actually uh, comes off pretty easy. Then 
you would end up, end up something like this. This is my 8700K and only the two particular pads are connected together. You should use some magnification like uh, 10 times loop to check visually that there are none of the uh, surrounding pads are connected to these two. These two pads should have uh, zero ohms between each other and then the whole thing should be good to go. Oh well, as you probably saw, the performance is great and the CPU and motherboard combination works nicely. So far I've had this rig for a few weeks now and I've used it for gaming, video rendering, web browsing and all sorts of day-to-day -day stuff and I haven't seen any single downside from running an unofficial rig like this. As I said at the start of the video, you should only try with the CPU modification only at first. If nothing happens when you press the start button, then you pretty much need to find this particular modification point on your own motherboard. The uh, sad part is that it, this is very hard to locate on most of the models, but the uh, same thing can actually be done on the bottom side of the CPU as well, where you just need to uh, cover a few other pads so that they don't have any contact to the socket pin. <laughs> Also, at the moment, this uh, modification is limited to a very few uh, 
motherboard models only and there's not any sense to uh, expect that all the uh, motherboard manufacturers are going to release a custom uh, coffee lake bios to each of their older motherboard models as it would reduce their new uh, motherboard sales and also it is something that intel would surely like if you happen to own this particular model here or the bigger full atx oc formula i would happily recommend you try this out it's been a lot of fun doing this and it also gives the ability to save some cash if you want to upgrade to a six core without having to buy a new motherboard also what is really interesting is that the the new and upcoming 8-core Coffee Lake CPU is just around the corner. It will be very interesting to see if it will fit into this motherboard as well. If that happens, then uh, this motherboard here and its bigger brother are pretty much the longest living LGA 1151 motherboards that have been ever released. It only goes to show how amazing uh, product lifespan ASRock motherboards have, especially the OC Formula series. I will put some links down in the description below where you can find more of my and a few others results and also where to download the uh, specific BIOS for these models and also some necessary tools to change settings in the OS. If you like this video, please share and like it and maybe subscribe to the channel and let's see if I can do some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you.